So let's discuss the transformation of mechanical energy that a swinging pendulum experiences. So let's suppose our swinging pendulum only has conservative forces such as gravity acting on that object, on that swinging pendulum. So we're neglecting any type of non-conservative forces such as drag forces and other frictional resistive forces. So let's begin by constructing our pendulum. So we have our pendulum composed of a mass, a ball of mass M that is attached to a massless cord of distance L and the other end of our cord is attached to a ceiling, some other surface. So we take our ball and the length, the rope makes an angle theta 1 with respect to our y axis. So this we choose to be the y axis and this we choose to be the x axis. So if we take our ball and we position it at the position 1 right before we release it, what are the mechanical energies of that object? Well, right before we release it, the object is not moving. That means its velocity is zero. And so, at position one, the kinetic energy of the object is also zero because kinetic energy is equal to one-half mv squared. So, since v is zero, we have zero joules of kinetic energy at position one. Now, what about our gravitational potential energy? Well, the gravitational potential energy is m times g times h. So we choose the x-axis to be our h equals 0. So the height at the x-axis is 0. So that means we have to find the height above our x-axis shown in red. To find the height, we have to use the following right triangle. So we know that the entire distance of the cord is given by L. So that means this distance from this position to the origin is L as well. So if this entire distance is L, and if we can find this distance, the height of the triangle, we can then find the distance here given by the height. So let's suppose this angle is theta 1. We can use the trigonometric cosine function because cosine of the angle theta 1 is equal to the height divided by this distance L. So we rearrange and we find that this height of the triangle is L times cosine of the angle theta. So that means this distance, the height of the ball, can be found by taking L and subtracting L cosine theta 1 from L. So this is our height. So that means the potential energy, the gravitational potential energy of our ball at position 1 is m times g times height, which is this value, L minus L cosine theta 1. So we distribute m times g and we get m times g times L minus m times g L times cosine theta 1. So this is the maximum gravitational potential energy of our object of the mass, the ball, mass m, found at position 1. Now, as the object moves, as we release the object, the object begins to move from position 1 to position 2. And as it begins to move, its gravitational potential energy begins to transform into kinetic energy, the energy of motion. In fact, when our object reaches the origin, let's call it position 2, our gravitational energy is zero. It has entirely uh, transformed into kinetic energy. And so, at position 2, at the origin, it will have a maximum velocity. So at position 2, our gravitational potential energy is 0 because h is 0, and that means all of our gravitational potential energy from position 1, this much of it, has been transformed into kinetic energy. So kinetic energy is equal to this quantity, which is equal to the formula 1 half times mv squared. So now we can simply rewrite our equation and solve for the velocity, and we find that the velocity is equal to the square root of 2 times g times l multiplied by 1 minus cosine of the angle theta. So, this is our velocity of our object at position 2 at the origin.
Now, what about position three? Well, position three is identical to position one in the sense that at position three, it will have a maximum gravitational energy equal to this quantity, which is shown here. And because at this point, the object is momentarily stationary, its velocity is zero. So that means at position three, its kinetic energy is also zero. In fact, as long as we're neglecting drag forces and friction, if we let go our if we let go of our object, the object will continue to swing endlessly. Now, the reason it actually stops swinging in real life is because of drag forces and the force of friction. So, now let's suppose we want to calculate what the tension in the rope is. How do we calculate the tension in a rope? Well, we begin by recalling Newton's second law of motion. The sum of all the forces acting on our object, the ball, at any given point is equal to the mass times acceleration. And in this case, our acceleration is centripetal. So that means our acceleration is centripetal, which, which can be written in the following format. M times V squared divided by L, where our A radial is simply V squared divided by L, and L is the radius of the orbit the object would form if it would continue in the following circular pathway. So, now we have to find all the forces acting on our object. So let's look at this diagram. So our object is accelerating radially in the following direction. And in the same direction, we have the force in the rope, the tension in the rope. So that means we choose the tension in the rope to be positive. So let's say Ft is positive. And the other force acting on our object, the ball, the mass m, is the force of gravity, which points downward. So let's suppose the angle here is some angle theta, which is, by the way, different from theta 1. So let's say the angle is theta, and that means this force acting along the same axis as the tension in the rope and pointing in the opposite direction is given by m times g times cosine angle theta. So, let's write that. The force tension in the rope acting in the same direction as our acceleration, so that's positive, minus m times g times cosine of the angle theta is equal to our mass times our radial acceleration, which is equal to mv squared divided by l. Once again, l is our radius. In this case, it's the entire length of the cord. Now, let's solve for the tension in the rope. So we, le uh, we leave this on the left side and bring everything else to the right side. So we see that the tension in a rope is equal to mv squared divided by L plus mg cosine of the angle theta. So now we use what we found for velocity in part two. We take this quantity, this formula, and replace it and place it into our V here. We substitute it. So notice that V is squared, so that means this radical cancels out. So we're left with the following equation. Notice before, because M appears here and here, we took the M out, and that's exactly what we get here. So now we take this, plug it into V, we get the following result, M times this whole quantity. So we multiply the M's out, and we notice that L's appear on the top and bottom, so this L cancels, and we're left with the following formula. So, the tension in the rope, the tension in our cord, massless cord, is given by the following equation, where M is the mass of our object, the ball, G is our gravitational constant, theta 1 is our initial angle that this uh, pendulum makes with respect to the y-axis, and this angle theta is simply the angle at which we're studying our tension in the rope. 